I like to do small engine repair for friends, family, neighbors, things like that. Um, the gas has gotten so bad, especially in California. Um, it's not good for very long, and people have a bad habit of leaving their uh, gas on and <clears throat> leaving things sit around for a year or two, and then they try and start it up, and um, not much luck. So I go through these, mostly carburetor work, to flush the fuel tank, fuel lines, uh, fuel filters, things like that. Got a little collection here on the bench of stuff to keep me busy. And then uh, I've been getting a lot of these generators. Fuel problems, uh, mostly. Don't want to start, don't want to run, don't run well. Cleaning up the carburetor, going through them, changing the oil and, and everything usually solves the problems. Got a compressor here. Just need a little going through. And um, then a friend of mine had a log splitter. And it's a very heavy one. Um, homemade, uh, but very, very sturdy and uh, robust. And he was loading it in a truck and it slipped off the forklift and did uh, really a lot of damage. Um, but the main thing that it did, and he didn't even know it at the time, was it broke the exhaust manifold. It's a Honda 13 horsepower engine. And um, this part's about $56 plus shipping. Uh, they do still still have it available. But uh, I told him, you know, let me give it a try. I've had some luck with brazing cast iron. A lot of people think it can't be done or shouldn't be done. Now this was in three pieces. Um, when he brought it to me, I've brazed up this one. And um, basically when you're done, it, it, it looks similar. It has color to it uh, that's different than the cast iron. But I've uh, basically ground away some material, not from the inside, but from the outside, enough to fill it in. And the brass is actually very durable and very hard. And I've had uh, luck with this on exhaust manifolds and other cast iron items. So I'm going to give this a shot, and um, if it works, I save him a little bit of money, and uh, and learn a little bit more about uh, brazing brass um, than I already know. I always learn something. So I'm going to uh, grind the edges back on this piece, get this clamped down to the welding table, and uh, see if I can get it repaired. Okay, so I've ground away uh, some of the material on the uh, cast iron. Just enough where I can flow some brass in there and, and give it a good uh, overlap from one piece to another. Get this piece here. And I'm going to be using 332 uh, 18 inch rod uh, with the, it's flux coated. Um, there's all kinds of different ways <clears throat> that you can do this, and I've seen I've seen some really amazing things done with cast iron, and I've seen some really poor things done. In particular, someone tried to stick weld a uh, cast iron engine block, a hole in it. Uh, that didn't go so well. But I have had luck with brass and cast iron. Um, as I mean, this is just an exhaust manifold. It's it's not really structural. It's not like it's a connecting rod or or some, uh, you know, an engine block or something. Um, there is some vibration, but even though brass is considered a fairly soft metal, um, I found that it's it's very durable and <clears throat> easily workable. And so what you want to do with your torch is you want to get the cast iron so it's glowing, uh, sort of orange, uh, and then flow your uh, your brass into it while it's 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 still hot. Um, and you want to get the cast iron good and hot. Um, it, it really dissipates and absorbs and dissipates heat. And uh, so you really need to get the part hot. But you don't want to melt it. You don't want to get hot enough to melt. You're not actually melting the cast iron. You're melting the brass into hot, glowing hot cast iron. That seems to provide the, uh, the best adhesion and longevity of the repair. Now I've seen some videos on YouTube where there's people who say, oh, well, I'm going to have to redo this grinding that I'm showing you here because I touched it and any oil from my finger is going to cause that to be a problem there where I try and braise it. Well, <clears throat> I'm no uh, expert on, on uh, uh, 
on things like that, but I can tell you that I'm fairly confident that by the time I heat this up hot enough to melt brass, any oil from my finger is no longer going to be there, and I've never had any problem with adhesion due to oil from fingertips or anything else, really. I don't, I don't clean this with brake clean or any type of solvent or anything before I uh, do it. Uh, the heat is going to burn off anything uh, that might cause an adhesion problem. And the other thing that's important about this is when you clamp it down, and I'm, and I'm going to clamp it down to the uh, welding table here, after you're done, you want to leave it. And I'm talking about hours. In this case, uh, it's about 6.30 at night. So I'm going to braise this up, and I'm going to let it sit overnight completely clamped down. You want to get, let it completely cool off before you unclamp it. Um, that'll keep it, because uh, this stuff will take quite a while uh, to cool off and it can warp if you don't keep it clamped to a, uh, a flat surface. So that's very important that you clamp it securely and then leave it that way until it's completely cooled off. So um, I'm going to give it a shot here and see how it works. Okay, so I've gone all the way around this and uh, I'm going to leave it clamped up overnight. Went fairly well, had to stop uh, the camera there for a minute and get some extra welding rod. But uh, in the morning I'll take the clamps loose, break it loose, clean it up, and uh, we'll see how it did. Okay, it's the next morning. I've unclamped the exhaust manifold from the welding table, cleaned it up a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's not going to win any beauty contests, but it's, uh, I believe it's good and strong. I've got this side, there were, uh, this was cracked in three different directions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, spray a light coat of uh, flat black paint across that. And then I'm going to lightly file with a flat file and see if I've got any higher low spots and it should be ready to bolt back on the engine. Okay so what I've done is I've clamped it lightly in my vise and uh, ended up not having any flat black so I put a light coat of gloss black on it. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to file it with a flat file and see if I have any higher low spots. Okay so I've put uh, some paint and uh, flat filed and cross filed this 
I do have a little bit of a low spot right there, but it, there is a bridge across it, and there is a gasket uh, for this. Uh, it's fairly thick, and I believe that'll seal plenty good enough. So I'm going to bolt this back on the engine and fire it up. So there it is, exhaust manifold's back on. Everything works great. Uh, it is a good structural repair. Very solid. And this is the log splitter it goes on. Look at this thing. It's a monster. It's got to be 10 feet tall when it's stood up. It takes, you have to hand pump a ram down there just to lift the whole thing up. And that cylinder that they're using is off a D8 dozer. I believe that's to tilt the blade. Uh, it's just massive, massive log splitter. Ready to split wood.